Tankers, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James, and today we've got an overview video of our Henlong T34-85 Russian World War II 16th scale RC tank. Um, she's a beauty out the box. Now, for those of you who are fans of World War II, fans of tanks, um, you're gonna know the T-34. It was probably, a lot of, a lot of say, it's the tank that won World War II, uh, heavily used during that era by the Soviet Army, and um, looks great in 16 scale form. Uh, just taking a brief overview of it here, one thing I love about this tank, I have a lot of, uh, I've gotten a lot of Henlongs, but I love the detail just in the plastic itself. Um, it's a little, uh, you know, rough, if you will. It's not smooth plastic, so there's something about it that just looked differently when you take this one out of the box. But uh, in this video, again, we're gonna go through it all. So first things first, let's show you how it comes out of the box. So like all Henlong tanks, when you uh, when you slide it out, you're gonna see that it is wrapped fully in styrofoam. So pulling it out on the top part, you're gonna have a lot of compartments that are gonna hold all your accessory bits. You've got a few little boxes in there. You're gonna have your battery and your charger, because again, these tanks come ready to run. So you're getting an 18 milliamp lithium ion battery and a USB charger. It takes about four hours to charge up. So right away, if you want, get that on charge, if you're gonna follow along with this video, uh, while you assemble all the little bits and get the tank uh, going. Uh, looking around, again, you see it all laid out before you. Uh, this is everything that comes in the box. You're gonna have uh, some smoke oil comes with it because, again, these tanks are able to smoke, uh, which is really cool. You've got an IR sensor because all these tanks will play with each other. You can shoot other tanks as long as the IR sensors are installed and they will, you know, take hits, if you will, and uh, sort of play a game. You get a box with some airsoft pellets. They're six millimeter airsoft pellets. You can find them anywhere if you run out, but you get more than enough to get started and having fun, um, but you could always buy more. And then again, all the plastic bits you're gonna see laid out. This one doesn't have as many as some other tanks, but there's a good amount. Now we're not gonna go through the entire assembly piece by piece. You're gonna wanna open up the manual, which is fully detailed. It shows you uh, all the parts are labeled within their sets. So one set might be A, B, C, D, and each individual part is has a number. So A1, B2, things like that. And uh, you can just go around the tank. Uh, the way the manual works, you start with one side and you slowly work your way around. But there's a lot of cool detail, as you see me uh, when I had built it, from the little, from the ropes that go across to the barrels that go on the back of this one. Um, all the little, like, are, uh, if you will, the handlebars, if you will, that go around and the, the, the smaller details like that. Uh, I really like them. They're painted black and like that olive drab. You got to put your hubcaps, if you will, on, on, the, uh, on the road wheels and all around uh, it looks good. And then you're eventually gonna get to your decals. Those come in the same package as the manual does. Uh, and they just come on a little square mat. What you wanna do is take your Hobby Eagle, hob uh, take your Benchcraft hobby knife, and you're going to cut out each decal individually. This one didn't really need too much. I just wanted the Russian writing uh, and the tide. And they give you some other smaller ones that are up to you. They don't really tell you where every sticker goes. They just show where the main ones would go. And then with a tank, you could put them anywhere because tanks didn't have any sort of designation for anything, you know? They were just painting it up as they went. So with the decals, when you cut them out, you're gonna peel off the clear plastic and the sticker will stay with the plastic and then you're gonna press that onto the tank and then slowly peel away the, uh, the plastic film over the top, the clear film. Uh, and you wanna, again, you wanna do that very slowly. Make sure you take your time. When you, when you first push the sticker down, press it as hard as you can in all areas while the clear film is on and then slowly peel back the film. And I would almost say peel it at like 180 degrees. Like don't try to lift it up because the sticker could get lifted off. You just want to peel it nice and just take your time and it's going to look really good when it's all done. And then you can, when the clear film is off, again, rub your thumb over it and uh, really make sure it's on there. Because once it's on though, it won't go anywhere. So now that the tank's all built up, let's turn it on, plug it in, and show you how it operates. All right guys, so first things first, you get your transmitter, and now what you're gonna see with your transmitter is that uh, the sticks themselves, they, they're gonna be in their own separate bag out of the box, so you just gotta press in the sticks into your transmitter. Um, they just push in. If you want, you can add a little glue uh, just to tack them down, but they, they purposely are done like that. So you get those installed, and then you're going to want to install six AA batteries in the back. 
And one thing I love uh, about all the new Henlong tanks, they're coming for you tankers who know, uh, the Henlongs are coming with the 7.0, the TK7 uh, control board. That's been upgraded over the years throughout Henlong. When we first got the Henlong tanks, we were at TK6, and now the 7.0 just provides more functionality uh, than it ever has. So if you see the 7.0 sticker, every tank now that we sell at Motion RC is gonna have that, which is nice. And uh, what you get too, they put a guide to a lot of that new functionality, like a hot guide for you to program your tank. Because each tank has the ability to be really finely tuned. And when I mean like as far as trimming the tank, as far as how fast the tank's gonna work um, when you move the sticks, the turret traversing, the barrel uh, movement up and down, all that can really be dialed in, especially for the guys who like to take these things, do competitions, or you just want it to be as scale as possible. Um, that's great. I'm not gonna get that detailed in this video, but um, you know, it's nice to have there, and you have the manual provides all that information too. Now we want to, uh, you know, you're gonna have to put your battery in the tank itself. So first things first, you turn your tank on its side like this, and you're gonna see that there's a screw, and that screw is what you're gonna have to uh, take out, and this is your battery hatch, and it's super large, so the best thing, this, this battery that comes with it is an 1800 milliamp battery, and it's rather, you know, it's smaller, but there's plenty of space in this uh, T34 that you'll be able to, you know, we sell larger batteries that'll get even more running time, but on this battery, you should see about a half an hour of runtime, and what I love too now, they're all coming with an XT60 connector, which is great, so if you don't want to use the provided charger, if you have you know, a charger because you're an RC car guy or an RC plane guy, um, you're gonna be able to charge it up uh, with your own charger. And it'll charge a lot faster than the USB one that comes with it. So basically, rest it back in there and screw it down. And then we'll be ready to rock when we turn it on. Now on the T34, here's what we're gonna do to, uh, to get it going. This one has a little compartment in the front, which has our hidden our little on and off switch in there, which is great. So we could come over, we can turn that on. And one thing you'll notice is that any of your LEDs on the tank itself will start flashing. So we can close the compartment. Then we can turn on our transmitter. And now you'll notice, all right, transmitter's on, tank is on, but nothing's happening. Oh no, don't worry. That just means it's not armed. And you'll see there's a lock button on all these transmitters right here. And when I push that button, then it will arm our tank. Boom. And the tank is now armed with that nice diesel sound, uh, the startup sounds. And uh, it's just awesome when it first says, so I'm gonna drive it around quick just to show you so you can listen. I'm gonna raise the volume so you can really hear it. if you notice right off the bat, I'm going to lower the volume now so you can hear me a little better, but the speaker itself on these TK7 tanks has been improved. So every Henlong tank now comes with this new setup. So it's a new improved speaker, which is great. One thing that's also awesome about these tanks, it does have a smoker. And on all the TK7 tanks, the smoker is new and improved. So the older versions used to be a pumping mechanism, and that thing could break a little easier, it could flood a little easier. This one's more of a vaporizer, and it works almost instantaneously, and the amount of smoke it produces is infinitely better uh, than it used to be. So it's awesome, because uh, each tank is provided with some smoke oil, so it's great. And now when I push the smoke button on the transmitter, you can see it immediately turns off, and if I start it up again, it almost immediately starts. Uh, so it's really nice as far as how that works, and you can get a lot of smoke. And now when you want to load it up, all you do, it comes with the dropper, and it comes with this long like extension. You just want to put that in. You'll see there's a little tube inside right before where the smoke comes out. You would press, press that in and give it like two or three drops on each side. A little goes a long way with the smoker. Uh, you don't need to use a lot of oil every time you need to refill. Now, again, as far as the TK7 board goes, uh, the proportional steering is really great. So when you're 
uh, when you're driving around your tank, the right side is going to be driving it. So that's going to give you left, right, you're going to rotate forward, backwards, and the harder you press on the sticks, the faster it goes. So it's proportional, and with the new board, it's a lot, uh, I want to say, not, I guess more sensitive, you know, it just, it works, it feels like it works better. You you have more control over your tank, and with the extra abilities now to really dial in those, you could drive your tank in any way you wish. You can make it so that when you go full throttle, it'll only ever go, you know, at a snail's pace. So that's up to you. That's all the things you can adjust within the tank. Just follow the instructions in the manual. Now the other side, your left side stick, is for your turret traversing. And again, that is proportional as well. If I go full, it'll, it'll move really fast. But if I start lowering, it'll move a lot slower. You know, I could go more scale, and then up and down is going to be for your barrel adjustment, which is cool. And you can do all of these can happen at the same time, which is also nice. Now there is no, th it doesn't full 360 on the turret. It'll stop about, you know, almost 360 each way, but it'll start clicking. So you don't want to go too hard in one direction or the other. And then the other thing, let me, let me face you, you do have, you know, machine guns. See the little red light for the machine gun in the front, which is cool. And then when you want to fire, uh, you know, an airsoft pellet or just fire in general, you push both buttons. And inside there is a way too in the manual. Um, you can do an adjustment where you can shut off the BB firing out and just hear the noise and get the kickback. That's another thing. The recoil of the tank itself. You can change the amount of recoil however you want. Again, another setting that's just a little too involved. This video will take forever if I go through it, but you know, it's in the manual for how to do that. So now I'm going to lower the volume, turn the volume down so you can hear me even better. Now just some of the other added bits. Again, on the top of this tank, you have two hatches. One hatch is going to be for your, for your, uh, for your IR sensor, I believe that's the one. Nope, that's not the one. This is gonna be where you load in your BBs. So if you don't see the IR sensor, and then this hatch has the little port for the IR sensor. So uh, you could see now as we're outside, uh, when you fill it up with your BBs, you could fill it up as, you know, top it off if you will, and it'll just keep racking fire on the, uh, you know, as you fire it outside. And they fire pretty far too, and they can be pretty accurate. You know, what I love about these tanks is when you adjust the the, the, uh, the barrel, you know, you really get a nice trajectory going and you can really try with, uh, you know, to hit. And then also you could plug in the IR sensor and play around with other tanks. Again, with the IR sensor, it's about 20 to 30 feet if you're indoors, probably 30 feet if you're indoors. But when you're outside, it's gonna be a little less if you're in direct sunlight. So just be careful of that. Um, that's just something with the IR and the hot sun is just, uh, you know, makes it a little tougher. But if you're in a nice shady spot outside, like there's a lot of tank, you know, there's tank clubs around there where these guys do it. Um, it's a really cool feature. So that'll do it, guys, for the T-34-85. Um, just an awesome, if you love World War II, um, you're going to recognize this tank, and it's going to be one of those must-haves. Um, happy to have it on the site. Again, it comes in two options. So the upgrade is all plastic road wheels and plastic treads, or we have a professional version where all the road wheels and the uh, treads are going to be metal. So that's better for bashing, crossing over crazier terrain and stuff. Um, but for any guys who just you know, want to have a nice tank that can also work beautifully as just a display model, man, it looks good. You know, especially if you get this and a Tiger One or something, you're going to have a lot of fun uh, for you World War II buffs out there. But guys, if you have any questions at all for me, please leave them in the comment section of this video. If you want to talk to other tankers who are really into the hobby, head over to Hobby Squawk. Um, that link is in the description. Our tank section right now is loaded with guys who are sharing pictures, sharing knowledge about all the customizations, all the things they do to Henlong tanks, Toro tanks, and the like. Uh, definitely jump in there. And as always, guys, hit the like button if you like this sort of contact. Uh, and again, pick up yourself a Henlong tank. So that'll do it for us here. We'll see you next time at Motion RC.